Hey, hey, it's Lewis D again, and for this video, I'm going to be doing a reading vlog of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng or Celeste Nong. Hoorah! So here in the Philippines, we pronounce NG as Nong, so whichever, you know, pronunciation it is. Well, uh, this book has been pretty popular. I've been seeing it around a lot in BookTube and in YouTube for years. Well, BookTube is in YouTube, so yeah. So let's begin reading it and see how we think about it. Open eye. Through the waves cut through me Hypnotized By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Can't make coast collide Hold tight, hold tight Hold tight So a reading update. Now I just started reading Little Fires Everywhere and it began with a fire in the house of one of the main characters and also what I'm getting from this setting is that they're really a community to the point that there's like uniformity. Like there were rules about how their house is to be constructed and all that stuff. And honestly, personally for me, I'm not sure if that is something that I'm up to. And we'll see about, you know, um, Moody and Pearl's relationship if it's going to happen because there's some love going on here. So... Yeah, and I really liked it when they talked about uh, Mr. Yang's uh, situation or story. I think it was vividly done well. Um, we'll see how, you know, all these other narratives contribute to the overall main narrative of the book. So catch you folks later. Cool. So I just finished my live stream, um, live show discussion of I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. And once that has been like uploaded which by the time that you will be watching this most likely it is i'll be putting the link down below now so far in terms of little fires everywhere um there's not much of an update that i can give since um yeah the stories kind of um has a slow pace uh, the thing about it is it's kind of like so far what comes off is that okay pearl is like this uh lexi is like that and they went to this it's more of like just getting to know the characters and like their situations which i did kind of understand but it's not as like impacting if that makes any sense like i'm not sure if it's impacting to the overall narrative maybe i might find something towards like the succeeding pages i'm still hopeful and We'll see how I'll feel about them. I'm, I'm still pretty hopeful. So yes, in the previous clip you saw me watching The Lost Recipe, which is a show in uh, GMA News. Now that is a TV show or a TV series that I have been getting into lately. So going back to the reading update of Little Fires Everywhere, now we get to know more about Mia, Mrs. Richardson, Pearl, and Izzy. And I think the story is starting to get a little bit more interesting. Now I think that there is something with Mia and Izzy's relationship that I think would create a huge impact in the story. And yes, I do believe in that. And then with Mrs. Richardson, the way that uh, her circumstance or the way she uh, treats Izzy, I think it is coming from her being compliant. It was kind of stated in the story that you know, Mrs. Richardson is a compliant person, and I myself who leans towards that, you know, being compliant, making sure that, you know, nothing is going to be said, you know, making sure that everything flows smoothly. You know, I can personally kind of relate to that, and that is something that, you know, um, if, you know, one can have insights about and think about, which is pretty good so far. And 
about this thing about the baby. I'm definitely interested about how this will go. We get to know more about it. And it's actually indicated in the back of the book, like the synopsis, you know, how it is a vital part that this uh, baby's uh, custody is going to be like, you know, debated. So I'm definitely curious about uh, like the themes and the narratives um, can make one pensive. I, I do think that it can make one pensive. I I'm hoping that I'm right, but we'll see how you know, the narrative is going to go. Whoa! Yeah, so a little bit of a reading update now. There are two mysteries that I'm definitely curious about and definitely intrigued about. Well, number one would be the custody of Mirabelle. Who's going to have her custody? And number two, of course, the mystery of Mia's identity. We're going to find out what will be the result of Mrs. Richardson's search for Mia's past now. I wonder what it will cost Mrs. Richardson. Now those are the good stuff now. The not so nice part would have to be this um, romance between Trip and Pearl. For some reason I felt like it was just like squeezed. I don't think it makes any sort of like impact onto the overall contribution to it to the narrative. It's like it's just squeezed in so it's like should be in a different book, you know? So, yeah, what we'll find out, okay? I am actually a little bit less than half away till I'm done with this book. So, I'll catch folks later. Wah. <laughs> so aside from a hair update, I'm going to be giving you a reading update. Now, throughout the last pages that I've read, uh, what I noticed is that we got to know about Mia's history and Mia's past and how it all went there. And honestly, this was the part that was a little worthy for myself. Maybe if you are, you know, intrigued about art, visual arts to be specific, photography and all, you might find this very enjoyable, like it's something that would captivate you. Um, also, the last pages had to deal with, you know, what one should do in life. And I'd have to say throughout this, uh, these parts since my last update, it also focused on pregnancy. So if you want to find out what I mean, you got to read the book in order for you to understand. So another reading update. Now I'm reading like the uh, scenes where the hearing about the custody of um, Mei Ling or um, Mirabelle uh, is being like heard and there's a lot of topics that are being raised uh, you know, talked about like to a certain extent there were like discussions about heritage and what is best for a child. So can make you think about those things. So if you want to know what they are, well, you know what you gotta do. Read the book. So I just finished reading Little Fires Everywhere last night and I'd have to say that it was definitely a progress. Like it started out kind of mm, like it's as if it's too to me it's like a, too much of like a storytelling if that makes sense. Like it was like once upon a time and then here we are. It's kind of like it gave me some sort of like a sing-song kind of tone, but all throughout like when, you know, um, 
they started getting to know each other and like what happened with the um you know the case of um you know Bebe's uh daughter's custody that's when it started really bring up there were some scenes though that were a little like dull like i mean i felt like it was uh gonna be helpful when it comes to the story but i felt like there was like a part where it was just like the tone like the pace of the story was a little like like you know it wasn't really like pumping up if that makes sense it wasn't as intriguing when they were talking about like i think that mia's background is very important in the story however i don't think that it was able to make uh, that narrative resonate to people like at least in my reading experience it didn't really resonate that much like it was very long and i felt like it was just a history of like how she appreciated art and how she you know ended up how how things ended up so and i love the ending of it actually i love how there's still a mystery involved <laughs> there's a little hint for that one because i think i saw the hulu trailer i think it's definitely different but i haven't seen it but i just seen like the trailer like in youtube i think it's different so yeah um but yeah like i said they this book had some strong points and it had some like dull points in between and also i think that in terms of like there were topics here that were like discussed well that to me it's like it's gonna make you you know contemplate like um heritage custody um you know uh, giving birth um what else yeah there is some like uh discrimination like involved here especially that part where izzy became the savior good job <laughs> so yeah and overall it was pretty interesting i'm not sure though if it is that amazing there were times where it was dull so i think i'm gonna give this book um let me think about it i have to give this book um because of that part where they were talking about Mia's history and like the sing song vibe of the um you know beginning part I'd have to go with this book um but yeah I think there were some strong points I think I'm gonna go with 3.75 out of 5. Feel free to put in down below the comment section your thoughts about this book if you've read it or you know if you have any interest in reading this one. So, if you've made it this far, leave a derelict or a destroyed house emoji because we were dealing with a destroyed house or a burnt house in the beginning. So I guess that's about it. If you folks like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon somewhere down there to keep yourselves posted about my videos. I'll also be putting down links and handles of my social media accounts, so feel free to check me out and follow me there as well. As always, thank you super much for watching. Always be thankful and unleash the reader in you. Bye, y'all.